Rosemary, I see you have connected. Welcome to our demo lecture. So it will give you access to your audio and video settings. You just have to grant permission and let's get this done. Okay, I'll see you now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect, yes, I do. That's beautiful, so that means we're ready to go. Okay, so um, yes, this is the platform. As you can see, I have a PowerPoint in here. That's one of the things that we can do. Um, also for our hemodynamics class, we're gonna be able to connect the ultrasound machine to the system, and then you can see all the adjustments that we are able to do. But well, um, so you can see it, there is a chat session. I'm just gonna say hello, hello, right here, okay. You see the message it's just gonna show up in there. Also, if you want to send me a private message or want to send you a private message, we can do that as well. There's one session, this is private message. I'm gonna say, create a private room. And then I'm just gonna send you another message, which is gonna be private. All right. Okay, so also um, we're able to screen share. Like for example, if we wanna look for a picture in the internet or something like that, or information, we can do that. I'm just gonna show you right now how to do it. I'm just going to screen share it with you. So share it in here. Now I'm just going to open one um, new window. Okay. And let me know if you can see Google in here. Yes, I can see it. Perfect. So let's say if I want to show you like a picture of the uh, common carotid. All right. And let's say Doppler. All right, so we go here and go to the images and then look at this picture. So there's something that we can do if we wanna have access to the internet for information, for pictures, then we can do that as well. So let me come back to the platform, stop a screen sharing with you. And do you have any questions until now of how the system works? No, it's very clear. It's very clear, perfect. So next step is, uh, showing you, uh, you know, the demo class itself. And today I have for you a little bit of the cerebrovascular sonography, which is uh, um, heavy content in your test. And we're going to go over a little bit of the anatomy. I have a couple of questions for you at the end. And let's start with this anatomy here. So first of all, can you see my pointer? It should yes. say my name. All right, cool. So this is the aortic arch, so you can see it. Yes. Right? And it has this first branch that we call the brachiocephalic, right? Or in the minate artery, right? Now, brachiocephalic is just going to give you more sense because brachio means arm, cephalic is towards the head. So basically, the brachiocephalic is going to give you one branch, which is going to call what? Subclavian, right? Subclavian, to be more precise. And then we have the right common carotid artery, right? Because the left common carotid artery, most of the times is gonna come from the aortic arch. And I'm telling you most of the time, because sometimes the left common carotid artery is gonna have the same of the brachiocephalic. Next branch is gonna be the left subclavian, all right? Now, now, let me tell you something. The two common carotids, they will give you what we call the anterior circulation. And the vertebral arteries, which are coming from the subclavians, as you can see it in here, okay, one here, 
and one here, they will form what we call the posterior circulation. Okay, so any questions until now? Was this clear? Is the yes, it fine? is. Yes. Okay, cool. So anterior circulation, which is formed by the carotid arteries. So 75% of the blood that is coming to the brain is going to use this path. And it's going to send flow to the front and sides of the cerebral hemispheres and eyes as well. And the eyes as well, because there's one artery that we call the ophthalmic, that is the branch from the internal carotid, that is intracranial. And we're going to talk about that in future lectures if you decide to take this course with me. All right. So this is a beautiful picture here where you can see the... Um, common carotid artery here and then you can see the external and then you can see the internal the question is how do i know that this is external right here and this one is internal um what do you think from previous classes from your college from your school by the diameter by the diameter you know diameter sometimes helps but there are patients where the diameter sometimes is the same so the best way is going to be by the Doppler waveform, which is usually a question in your test. So that's the best way to know. So the right internal is going to give you what we call a low resistance Doppler waveform and the external a high resistance one. So here I have a nice uh, table to compare the internal versus the external. So the internal, yes, has a larger diameter most of the times. So it says in here. Internal does not going to give you any branch in the neck. Well, the external is going to give you eight. But this is not the best feature to differentiate between one and the other, right? Internal has a low resistance pattern, while the external has a high resistance one. Yes, this is the one that is going to give you the main difference between these two vessels in here. The internal has a dilation that we call the carotid ball. Yes. And the external responds to temporal top, but this is not exclusive for the external. Sometimes the internal also responds to the temporal top. Now let me explain what this is. Okay, temporal top is when you tap right in here. So there's one branch that we call a superficial temporal artery, which is the branch from the external. And when you hit in here, boom, 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 this is gonna happen in the waveform of the external carotid artery. Of course, you're gonna be like taking the external, you know, taking a picture or taking a Doppler waveform from the external, and then you just tap in here, pump, pump, pump. It's the temporal tapping. And look at the branches in here. Okay, so for the external, we have eight of them. Okay, superior thyroid, ascendant pharyngeal, lingual, facial, occipital, posterior auricular, superficial, maxillary. Sometimes you have to use techniques to remember maxillary, all Maxillary, you say? Yep, maxillary, that's the one. Sometimes you have to use techniques to remember all these names. Um, like, for example, I go this way, say, well, I have the superior thyroid because I'm touching this area in here. What else do I have in here? Okay. Uh, pharyngeal, so pharyngeal, sending pharyngeal, also lingual and facial. Sometimes I go from the neck to my face, and then I try to remember that way. Like I go this way and I say, well, something in here, occipital and facial, and then uh, temporal, and then behind my ears, the posterior auricular. So uh, there are certain ways to remember all of this, right? Like, I use this word, salpho, all right, PSM. That may give you a clue or um, any technique to remember all these names. That might work for you. All right, out of this one, uh, we talk a lot about the facial because it makes a connection to the orbicular branches in the, in the eyes, all right? And then from here, it makes a connection to the ophthalmic. This is what we call one external to internal collaterals that we're gonna learn um, in later 
lectures. Now, if we keep going this way, look at the waveforms. Okay, the internal carotid, it gives you what we call a load resistance one. You see it, is, it has a broad pick for the pick systolic. Uh, the diastole is not so far from the systole. So that means that this system is continuously sending flow to the brain. That's why we call this a load resistance. Remember from hemodynamics, if you have load resistance, you have more flow going to the organ. Now, the next waveform, that's the one for the sternal. It has a sharp peak. We call this here the carotid notch right here. All right. And the peak systolic is a little bit far away from the diastole, right? That means this waveform has more pulsatility. It has a more faster and quicker upstroke with a short acceleration time. All of these terms we have to go over in the hemodynamic class. And look at the common carotid. The common carotid has like a mixed persistence between the external and internal. All right, so the dichrotic notch is not so pronounced as compared to the external. Uh, the PK is still sharp, but not as sharp as the one that the external has. All right, so Rosemary, any questions on the now? No. You're fine? Yes. All right, good. Look at this. I know that when you're scanning, you find this blue here and this one here. And that's normal. Don't get alarmed when you see it. It's just normal that we call we call this helical flow or flow layer separation. What happens is that the flow is coming from... Um, let me just throw this for you because there's something that we can do in the platform as well. We can do diagrams. Look at this. We're going from the common carotid, and then this is the carotid bulb in here. So we have a laminar flow this way, all right, this way. And then the layers in the center, they will keep going straight up. The layers on the side, they're going to go this way. I'm going this way. And going this way. And going this way. And going this way. It seems like part of the flow is just going back. And that's why your system raised through this with the blue color. All right. So something that also I would love to explain to you is something that we call the carotid body, which is normal. It's a normal structure that we have that when this gets stimulated, it's going to put the blood pressure down, the heart beats as well, and also puts down the respiratory frequency. So that's good to know. And you know why? Because later we're going to study something that we call the carotid body tumor, which is a benign tumor, but it produces hemodynamics issues because it's going to extrinsically compress these uh, vessels in here. All right. So now I have a couple of questions for you to see if you understood what I talked about. And what do you think about this question? It says, which percentage of blood is supplied to the brain by the posterior circulation? 25%. Yeah, because if the anterior is giving you 75, so the posterior one is going to give you 25. Perfect, Rosemary, you got it. Awesome. All right, so... Now we're gonna go this way, this next question that was 25%, beautiful. Now read this one, cause it's a little bit more complex. It says, which statement best described the maneuver being performed to obtain the spectral waveform on this image? Read all your options and let me know, what do you think? See? Okay, this waveform is the result of a maneuver that may have effect over the ICA, yes. Because let's go one by one. If you go A, this waveform is the result of a temporal tap and it's always a specific to the external. No, it's not always a specific to external. That's good to know. This waveform is the result of a brute transmitted from the vocal cords to the... Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, that one doesn't work. Nothing to do with the vocal cords, no. So C is the one, but let's take a look to D. This waveform is common and normal for those artery regarding if any maneuver is being performed. No, you need to perform a maneuver in order to have this 
undulations in the waveform. It's just not going to happen automatically when you do the external karate. All right, so yes, that's it for today. Um, as it says in here, do not forget every day do something that will inch you closer to a better tomorrow. And that's it for today, Rosemary. So uh, we're going to be in touch for explaining you about the how the lectures are going to be, how long the course is going to be, and how are you going to sign up for all the links that you need for this class. Do you have any additional questions or anything? No. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much for your time. And... Have a beautiful evening.